even with more ethanol capable vehicles and more fueling stations, this isn't going to work unless we radically ramp up the production of ethanol. For a while now, we at GM have been working with a, a range of strategic partners, universities, businesses, governments, to fully understand ethanol development and how to rapidly and efficiently expand production in a manner that addresses these legitimate concerns. And so today, we're very pleased to announce that GM is partnering with Coscata Incorporated of Warrenville, Illinois. Cascada is best thought of as a next generation uh, biofuels company, right now focusing on ethanol. We have a, a process uh, that is uh, amenable to produ production of ethanol from a variety of uh, non-food feedstocks at a very, very low cost. The beauty of cellulosic is you can take things that would not interfere with the, the food supply. For example, harvest the corn for food and then take the corn stalks uh, and the fiber from that and make, and make ethanol. Uh, or take things like wood chips. Um, in fact, forest fire is a big problem in the West, and one of the best ways to reduce that, that danger is to get rid of the loose wood and leaves laying around. It's expensive to do it now because you can't do anything with it. But if you can make car automotive fuel out of it, then you've taken a problem you've made into, into an asset. People are always surprised when you say garbage, even municipal sewage, can be turned into a cellulosic ethanol or uh, fuels. Uh, it's surprising, but it is true, and it can be done, and the chemistry is, and technology is not that hard. The process is inherently very simple in that we take uh, as raw materials into the process a variety of uh, what we call non-food type materials. It could be uh, cellulosic materials like wood chips. Uh, it could be agricultural wastes like corn stalks or wheat straw. It could also be municipal solid waste or other carbon-containing uh, waste materials. And what we do is we, we gasify that to produce uh, carbon monoxide and hydrogen. Uh, it's called syngas. Then we take that syngas and we have strains of bacteria that utilize that material as food as the microbes are generating ethanol separate it very cleanly to fuel grade ethanol. We have a lot of interest in the science behind it, and, and we, we can provide our input from our experts. And certainly the public policy issues are, we are the biggest, or our products are the biggest consumer of what they wish to make. Makes a lot of sense to work together. And finally, I would say I believe they have a commitment to think about this globally, and we play globally. The partnership with General Motors is the first step in a broader partnership model that our company believes is necessary to bring technology like this uh, rapidly into the marketplace and get it commercialized so that large volumes of ethanol can be produced at a low cost. You know, my dream is to see a $1.99 fuel at every Walmart in America. And I believe cellulosic ethanol can do that. If we can get the supply, the distribution, we need to get more refueling stations out there. We're woefully behind the curve there. We can provide a lot of product and, and it has the chance to have a big impact on oil, the growth in oil usage, and particularly oil imports in this country. So it makes a lot of sense. It, you know, we, we feel good about the bet, and we're going to stick with it.